Well, Andy Davis is with me, and we're also joined by our political correspondent, Michael Crick. Andy, first of all, just tell us more about how they linked this personal revelation with the allegations against Andy Coulson and Rebecca Brooks. Well, the prosecution are arguing that such was the nature of this relationship, as illustrated in this very intimate letter that was produced before us in court today, that during the whole period in which both of them are charged with this phone hacking conspiracy, what one knew, the other knew. So take the case of Millie Dowler, the hacking of uh, Millie Dowler's phone, as the jurors were told today. Although Rebecca Brooks at the time was in Dubai, we were told, the case is that uh, Andy Coulson was in constant touch with her. And if he knew, as the prosecution allege, that Millie Dowler's phone had been hacked, and that was the source of their material, then he must have been telling Rebecca Brooks. Now, uh, Andrew Edis, QC for the prosecution, said that uh, this is likely to attract a great deal of publicity, and there will be um, no doubt unfair and some unkind comment, but it is, uh, in his case that he put to the jury, it is directly relevant to the charge of a conspiracy. Uh, Michael Crick, given the jobs of these two people and their positions in society, there'll be a lot of political comment. Yeah, the, the political implications are huge, uh, potentially, uh, because they raise huge questions, potentially, about David Cameron's judgment in appointing uh, Andy Coulson as Director of Communications, first for the Conservative Party, then he took him into government in uh, 2010. And David Cameron's always been asked about whether he asked, whether he grilled Andy Coulson. He said he did ask him questions, was satisfied with the answers. We also know that the Conservative Party did carry out some cursory checks through an agency, probably Kroll, uh, but they weren't very basic. Um, there, are other, there are other questions. Did Rebecca Brooks, who after all is a, a long-standing friend and constituent of David Cameron's, play any role in the appointment of Andy Coulson as Director of Communications? The official line has always been it was on the recommendation of George Osborne. And then there's the whole fascinating issue raised in Parliament and by the press a couple of years ago as to why Andy Coulson didn't have the most stringent form of security vetting known as developed vetting, DV when all his predecessors and successors in that job uh, have been DV'd. The official line at the time was the Cabinet Secretary thought that far too many people were going through development vetting and they should cut back, and in any case, Andy Coulson wouldn't need access to the, uh, the most sensitive of papers. Then they changed their minds and they started putting through Andy, Coul Andy Coulson through the process, uh, and at that point, uh, and it was then that he, uh, he had to resign. But, of course, this alleged affair might well have been a problem for him uh, in that process. Michael, Andy, thank you. Matt.